So they are grabbing us immediately. They don't even give us a chance to walk out on our own. A woman says a bouncer at a popular Chicago bar and restaurant manhandled her and even threw her down a staircase. But now the establishment's owners say that absolutely did not happen and they're filing a lawsuit against her for defamation. We're digging into how she's fighting back and the video the bar says proves she's lying. We discuss with defamation attorney Joe Meadows. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. A restaurant versus a TikToker. It's an interesting legal case that has just surfaced, and we want to talk a little bit more about it. So we have a young woman named Julia Real, and she says that security at a Chicago restaurant bar called Hubbard Inn kicked her out of the establishment alongside of her friend. And she says that they were less than nice about it. In fact, Real posted about her experience on TikTok, and the allegations quickly went very viral. I'm immediately grabbed by this man, and he's grabbing my arm, he's pushing me, he's manhandling me, and what is going on? What is the issue here? Why are you guys kicking us out? Why are you screaming at us? So what happened next? Well, Hubbard in responded, saying, this is not true. On its own TikTok page, it posted side-by-side -side images from their security video as Real described what happened to her earlier this month. Why are you grabbing me and manhandling me and dragging me, using my bag to pull me out? This video from the restaurant shows a man wearing a jacket with security on the back, seemingly escorting a woman, identified as Real, down the hallway. I'm just pushed down. He sends me flying down the staircase hysterical at this point i think i start to kind of yell scream back at him kind of push back at him and he takes me a second time and shows me again and sends me flying down the rest of the staircase now the security footage seems to also show that real was walking down a staircase she and another woman appear to be talking maybe even laughing at the bottom of the stairs before a security member points them toward the exit surveillance then shows her leaving now, TikTok users quickly turned against Real, calling her out for apparently lying for likes and views. Real's TikTok account now only has one video, and it is a response from her legal team. They said in part, quote, while the investigation into this incident is ongoing, our initial investigation has revealed facts entirely contrary to the misleading narrative provided on social media by Hubbard Inn. It goes on to state, what Hubbard Inn fails to mention in its self-serving post is that the area where Miss Real suffered her injuries was not videotaped. They claim there is a two-minute gap that's unaccounted for in the videos that the bar posted and said, quote, it's undisputed that Real suffered a concussion and had other significant injuries. The video ends by encouraging the public to hold off on picking a side until all the evidence is presented in court. And that leads to Monday when Hubbard House Restaurant LLC filed a defamation lawsuit against Julia Real. At the start of the lawsuit, the restaurant group says, quote, one of its patrons, defendant, had a bad experience of her own making late one Saturday night and was asked by plaintiff staff to leave their establishment. Rather than moving on with her life, defendant decided to publicly and falsely accuse plaintiff and its staff of physically assaulting her on TikTok, a popular public social media platform. Hubbard Inn said that it reached out to Real multiple times to take down the post, but said she never responded. So that's when they released their own TikTok video and decided to file the lawsuit. They state, quote, as a result of defendant's TikTok posts, plaintiff has lost business with at least 12 group cancellations. As a further result of defendant's posts, plaintiff has received numerous negative one-star reviews on Yelp, further harming plaintiff's reputation. Plaintiff also received many critical messages on Instagram, another popular social media site, and negative or threatening voicemails. The restaurant and bar says it lost about $30,000 in revenue from event and reservation cancellations. But what about that missing two minutes of footage, right, that, uh, that uh, Real had mentioned? Well, Hubbard Inn says, actually, there's only about 45 seconds where Real isn't on camera. The lawsuit explains, quote, not surprisingly, Hubbard Inn's security camera footage does not cover every square foot of the premises or every second of defendant's exit from the premises, including the top of the staircase, flights of stairs leading down from the second floor to the main floor. The footage does show, however, defendant being calmly escorted down the second floor hallway and defendant walking down the bottom part of the upper flight of stairs, the landing between the upper and lower flight of stairs, the lower flight of stairs, and out of the establishment. 
The plaintiff says that Rio committed defamation when she listed her allegations against Hubbard in, and they want the court to award damages. Further court date for updates on the case is scheduled for May. This is according to Illinois court records. So let's talk about it. I want to bring in right now Joe Meadows, an attorney who specializes in defamation. Joe, thanks so much for coming here on Sidebar. Happy to be here. Happy to talk about this interesting case. So is there a case? I mean, it seems to me, just on looking at it, if you got the receipts, if you got the video showing that someone's account is not true, um, it seems like they might have an argument, but you're hearing that there might be missing footage, there might be more context. What do you make of it? Exactly. I mean, if there is missing footage, if we don't have um, all the video here of what took place and you uh, take Miss Real for uh, what she said being the truth, then we've got a he said, she said case. I mean, we've got a real case, a real said, Julia Real said something. We've got a Hubbard in said story. We've got the TikTok users story. We've got the lawyers now talking about it in their uh, legal papers, and that's what you have a court system and a jury for. The thing that really, I think the defendant, excuse me, I think that the plaintiff, the Hubbard Inn, really articulated well, and you have to prove in a defamation case, is the harm. What did they suffer, right? So obviously I mentioned some of their, they lost, they allegedly lost $30,000, cancellations, negative reviews. I just want to highlight another part of this lawsuit. It says, quote, defendant published those statements on the popular social media site, TikTok on March 10th, 2024, where it was viewed over a hundred thousand times. At the time she published these statements, defendant knew the publication was false or otherwise acted with negligence. Defendant's publication of these defamatory statements has injured the reputations of plaintiff's business and staff, lowering plaintiff in the eyes of the community and deterring the community from associating with plaintiff. On the evening of March 9th, 2024, and into the morning of March 10th, 2024, defendant and her friend visited Hubbard Inn and became verbally abusive toward plaintiff's staff in the second floor bathroom. Plaintiff's staff members brought security to escort defendant and her friend from the premises. This was done professionally, safely, and in a calm manner. At no point while defendant exited the premises did any member of plaintiff's staff assault, push, shove, or manhandle her. So what do you make of the idea of how they've articulated the damages, their harm, what they've suffered, and the elements of defamation? Well, I mean, from a legal standpoint, you have to tick off if you're a defamation plaintiff, and I've been on both sides, uh, plaintiff and defense. If you're the plaintiff, you got to tick off the boxes uh, of what you need to allege to state a claim. And then that's the bare minimum. And then oftentimes you want to add some more flavor facts to your complaint uh, to show the strength of your case, maybe for the media interest and and get people on your side in, in, the, in the public atmosphere. So I'm, I'm not surprised that they have put their complaint together this way. It'll be interesting to see how Miss Real responds and whether or not she um, responds with an answer or a motion to dismiss, or maybe she even adds in a counterclaim based on the video that Hubbard in put out there with its own statements. In other words, she would fire back with her own defamation claim. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's not uncommon to have um, a defamation complaint. And then the other side says, well, yeah, in the way you responded to it, you defame me too. This happens a lot in various types of assault cases where one person will say, hey, you, you wrongly accused me of this. And then, and then the defendant will say, well, you're also calling me a liar, so I'm going to sue you for that. So then you're going to have dueling defamation claims. Talking defamation, that's a civil action. That's a lawsuit. We're talking about personal injuries here. And when it comes to protecting your legal rights and all kinds of personal injury cases, you definitely want a valued law firm in your corner. Well, enter Morgan & Morgan. This is America's largest injury law firm and a proud sponsor here on Sidebar. With over a 1,000 attorneys, Morgan & Morgan is all about fighting for the compensation you're entitled to, even if that means having to go to trial. You see, Morgan & Morgan, they don't settle for lowball insurance offers. In fact, They've recently secured verdicts of $6.8 million in New York, $12 million in Florida, and $26 million in Philadelphia. All these, by the way, significantly higher than the highest insurance offers in these cases. But one of the best things about Morgan & Morgan is how 
easy they have made it for their clients. They've completely modernized the process. From submitting your claim to talking to your whole legal team, it can all be done on your smartphone. You can see if you have a case in just a few minutes, and an attorney will review your case in eight clicks or less. So if you're injured, you can start by easily submitting a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar or by dialing pound law. That's pound 529 on your phone. I wanted to ask you about the two parties here um, and whether they constitute as public figures, which you and I both know can be a heightened standard for defamation. It's not just that they knew the statement was false, but they, you know, acted with a total disregard for the truth of it. They didn't even bother to do the research. Now, normally you would say if that was a publication, right, a newspaper who prints something uh, about a public figure, they didn't even bother to check if it was real or not. This seems to be a case where it's either real as telling the truth about what happened or she's not, right? I mean, it's not like she had to do an investigation. It either she experienced her being assaulted or she didn't. Um, I don't think there's much middle ground here. So, A, walk me through what you think the standard is here. And B, am I right that it's pretty black and white? Right. So on the standard... Uh, there's always an intent aspect in any defamation case, and the standard for intent is either either negligence for a private plaintiff or it's actual malice if you're a public figure, um, plaintiff, c- celebrity, politician, that type of person, or you're a plaintiff who was out there pushing an issue and uh, out in the media talking about some sort of public interest issue and the defamation arises out of that i don't i mean without more i don't i don't see that here this seems to be two private parties and so without more the standard seems to be negligence a little bit lower so hubbard in wouldn't have much to prove in terms of the intent factor to establish their claim flip side if miss real counterclaims and sues hubbard um, I don't see how she's a limited purpose public figure or a public figure that that she would have to prove actual malice either. Uh, you're absolutely right on the truth falsity aspect. It's black or white. She she says in her TikTok videos that uh, people grabbed her, manhandled her, pushed her down, flying down the stairs. Those are you can either prove that's true or prove it's false. Doesn't seem to be very opinionated. And of course, Hubbard N says uh, none of that was true. I think there's something to also be said by the fact that they have chosen to file a lawsuit. That in and of itself was important to restore their reputation. Again, I, we don't know what really happened here, right? Um, but the idea of, hey, we're not only going to defend ourselves, we're not even going to not only show video of what happened and compare it to your account, Ms. Real, but we're actually going to file a lawsuit. Do you think that helps them uh, in their uh, restore some of their reputation by just filing the lawsuit? Well, look, I don't know, but this escalated quickly. I mean, you think about it, March 9th was the event. And if you notice in the complaint, they say it was March 9th into the morning of March 10th. I don't know if they're trying to signaling signal something there as this was a late night event. Uh, But I did pick up on that. So March 9th was the event. March 10th, Miss Real did her TikTok post. Three days later, March 13th, Hubbard N did their counter post. Two days or three days after that, Miss Rio and her law firm did their counter counter post. And then two days after that, you had a lawsuit. So things rapidly escalated into a lawsuit here. Sometimes um, it is a strategic call to file the lawsuit to show people that what was said about you was wrong, to try to restore your reputation. I wonder if the Hubbard Inn tried to work with Miss Rio on things to get her to take her post down, and she either did not respond or denied that. That's they what they claim. Like, That's what they claim. Yeah. yeah, and then so I guess they had no. They felt like they had no choice and wanted to um, uh, make this a public record. Do you think this is going to advance all the way to a trial, which could happen you know, years down the line, or do you think this is a case that, uh, in your experience, would settle? I, you know— in the past 20 some years, civil trials are rarer and rarer, and, and that's usually a lot having to do with the cost of litigation. But when you have a, a true he said, she said, um, black and white situation, if you have two parties who are absolutely convinced 
of the truth and and money is no object here um then then they'll probably go toe to toe all the way this doesn't seem like a case where you've got some opinion issues or maybe some other legal arguments to toss out the claim so she says that there is a there's footage that's missing um and if that's true um, and, and, you know, Hubbard in came back and said, look, we can't cover every inch, inch of our establishment. Um, they say it was only 45 seconds that was missing, but I'm looking at the video at the very end, right? When she was allegedly being walked out. Um, and I'm trying to see if she was attacked, if she was pushed down the stairs, would she be behaving differently? And I'm curious what your point of view was from watching the video. So, yeah, maybe there's pieces of footage missing. But from what we do see, what does it tell you? Well, I mean, that's exactly what a jury would do when you present all this evidence. That they, they, You're not going to have the complete story because there's video missing. So jury is allowed to make decisions and determinations based on circumstantial evidence. And how Miss Real was acting on the video you know, from a circumstantial evidence standpoint could fill in the gaps. And maybe a jury says to themselves, uh, this doesn't appear like someone who had just been manhandled or thrown down or hit in the gap period that we don't have video for. Uh, and, and that way is in favor of Hubbard in. But, you know, there's also other, forget the video and camera. Maybe there are other witnesses right. um, that would come out in the trial, witnesses for Hubbard in. Maybe other patrons for Miss Real would that would come forward and support one side uh, or the other. In the lawsuit, I believe Hubbard in mentions that their staff and personnel are witnesses to what happened. Um, but you know, in terms of who Real can have to support her claim, that would be interesting. Um, I wanted to end really quickly by asking you about the big picture on this. Right, one of the things that caught my attention about it was that you have a TikToker being sued. I don't have TikTok anymore. But I do have Instagram and constantly what you see are, um, you know, influencers giving their opinions about restaurants and establishments and experiences, some positive, but also negative ones. This is obviously an extreme case where you have a, an individual accusing a restaurant of physically harming her. But what about the ones that make claims about different establishments and should they be concerned? that they face legal liability, that they're, the points that they make will open them up to defamation claims? Or again, is this more of a extreme example and it kind of depends upon what they're saying? I think it's an extreme example. It does depend on what they're saying. How you say it and what you say it and where you say it are all important in defamation cases. I would say 99% of the time, anybody's doing a review on a restaurant or any type of business, you know, their opinion statements. Uh, I didn't like it. The service was bad. The food didn't taste good. Those are all opinions. You can't prove the truth or falsity of those statements. And the First Amendment protects people to say those things. It's when you cross the line and you talk about things that are actually provable, um, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, or it's or it's false, that that it's something that you could bring a, a court claim for. But But most of the time, people are just giving their opinions, putting on a one star or two star, and, and and you can't really take people to court for that kind of thing. Joe Meadows, thanks so much for coming on. I find defamation cases fascinating, and I'm sure this will not be the last one that we cover. So if you have the time, I'd love to have you back on, sir. Love to do it again. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you right now here on this episode of Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time. Thank you.